Have you ever calculated your BMI? Or has your doctor ever told you your BMI is too high or too low? Have you wondered why your doctor seems to care so much about that number? And more importantly, should you? Hi, I'm Dr. Leonid Kim. I am board certified in internal and obesity medicine. And in this video, I will tell you when you should and should not worry about your BMI and what your BMI can tell you about your health. And more specifically, how a normal BMI doesn't mean you're in good shape and how a bad BMI may not mean you have unhealthy weight. But first, what is BMI? BMI stands for Body Mass Index. And simply put, it's a statistical tool that uses a person's weight and height to give an estimate of body fat. And it provides a simple numeric measure of a person's thickness or thinness, thus allowing healthcare professionals to discuss weight problems more objectively with their patients. BMI is calculated by taking a person's weight in kilograms divided by height in meters squared. And there are multiple online calculators that will help you figure out your BMI in a matter of seconds. Your BMI number will place you in the category of either underweight, which is below 18.5, healthy weight, which is 18.5 to 24.9, or overweight, which starts at 25, or obesity, which starts at 30 and above. Now, BMI doesn't measure body fat directly, but rather it is an indirect correlate of your body composition. So BMI alone is not enough to diagnose one with having obesity. It is often calculated at your doctor's office as a screening tool to evaluate how far your body weight departs for what's considered normal and subsequently help assess your risk of diseases often seen in high BMI. And those include heart disease, high cholesterol, diabetes type 2, high blood pressure, strokes, liver disease, sleep apnea, osteoarthritis, and a whole host of other conditions, which do include at least 10 cancers. Having overweight or obesity associated with a whopping 51% increase in mortality compared with people who've always been a normal weight. And most recently, both higher BMI and obesity have been associated with poor outcomes with COVID, including higher likelihood of hospitalization, ICU admission, and use of mechanical ventilation. Now, in order to understand the nuances of BMI, we first need to understand how it came about. The detrimental effects of carrying excess weight are described as far back as ancient Greece and Egypt, with Hippocrates writing that corpulence is not only a disease itself, but the harbinger of others. In the US, life insurance data accumulated around early 1900s noted that body weight adjusted for height was independent determinant of life expectancy. The modern term of body mass index was coined by Ansel Keys in a paper published in the 1972 edition of the Journal of Chronic Diseases, where Keys argued that what he termed the BMI was at least as good as any other relative weight index as an indicator of relative obesity. Of note, Keyes explicitly judged BMI as appropriate for population studies and inappropriate for individual evaluation. Now fast forward to 1995 when the WHO published the uniform categories of the BMI. And in 1998, both NIH and CDC brought US definitions in line with the WHO guidelines, lowering the overweight cutoff from BMI of 27.8 to 25 which incidentally redefined 29 million Americans previously considered healthy to now being overweight. Now, who's to say that 25 is healthier than 27? Why were the definitions changed? Well, there's still some controversy surrounding the cutoffs, especially ones in the overweight category between 25 and 30. Some argue you can be metabolically healthy with obesity, meaning your BMI can fall in the overweight or obesity range but not have adiposity-associated cardiometabolic abnormalities we mentioned earlier. Well, the BMI cutoffs have been validated in many studies and meta-analyses, including an analysis of almost 900,000 European and North American adults published in Lancet in 2009 that found that mortality was lowest among those with BMI of 22.5 to 25, with a 30% increase in the mortality for each 5 kg per meter squared increase in BMI. Another meta-analysis of 230 cohort studies published in the British Medical Journal in 2016 looked at over 30 million individuals and found that both obesity and overweight were associated with an increased risk of all-cause mortality, 
with the lowest mortality observed in the BMI range of 23 to 24. And most recently, a study published in The Lancet in 2018 found the BMI range of 21 to 25 is associated with the lowest risk of all cause of death, except for transport-related accidents. And the risk of death starts to climb as one's BMI increases beyond 25. There are also multiple studies that try to focus specifically on the metabolically healthy patients with obesity. A study published in JAMA Internal Medicine in 2014 found that weight in the obese category increases risk of a heart attack and coronary artery disease irrespective of the presence or absence of metabolic syndrome. And another study published in the Journal of American College of Cardiology in 2018 found that even though those with metabolically healthy obesity did not have an increased risk of coronary vascular disease, nearly half of these individuals developed metabolic abnormalities and subsequently developed increased risk of cardiovascular disease on follow-up. Now having said all that, it is important to go over the limitations of BMI. BMI tables are excellent for identifying obesity and body fat in large populations. However, given individual variations, BMI is insufficient as the sole means of classifying a person as having obesity or malnourishment. BMI does not account for muscle mass, and the cutoff points do not always distinguish between men and women, nor do they account for ethnic and racial differences. For instance, BMI overestimates adiposity or fat levels on those with more lean body mass, think athletes and bodybuilders, whose muscle mass often drives their BMI higher. BMI underestimates excess adiposity on those with less lean body mass, especially in postmenopausal women. Another important caveat is BMI cutoffs underestimate the obesity risk in the Asian and South Asian populations. So for those, a BMI of 23 is a more appropriate cutoff point to define overweight since that's the threshold at which many Asian populations start being at risk for cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, and metabolic syndrome. Given those limitations, many clinicians should also measure your waist circumference or waist to hip ratio, as it serves as a better measure for the risk of heart attacks, strokes, and death. Some clinicians may also use a DEXA scan, which can give you a far more accurate measure of your body fat percentage, and more importantly, give insight of how much of that fat is visceral or android fat, which better correlates to metabolic diseases than waist circumference alone. In closing, I encourage you to calculate your own BMI and realize that the number you get is just a screening tool, serve more to study populations. And when you use on an individual level, BMI is insufficient to classify one as having the disease of overweight or obesity. However, having a BMI outside of the established norms should prompt you to work with your healthcare provider to assess the cause of weight gain or loss, screen for associated health risk, and help guide the treatment plan moving forward. If you do struggle with overweight and obesity, please consider subscribing to this channel, where I will be sharing the most up-to-date and evidence-based information on the topics of weight loss, metabolic health, and longevity. See you in the next one.